Facts and the gun control debate, that is the topic of tonight's byline. When gun control is debated, it's easy for emotion to take over rather than facts. It's a reality that law-abiding gun owners and their supporters are all too familiar with. This week, a court ruling came down that should change the argument in this country. Whether it will remains to be seen. It's not a groundbreaking decision. It doesn't set precedent. It doesn't strike down any laws, but it does strike down many of the arguments of the anti-gun crowd. The decision was in response to a court challenge brought by the Barbara Schliffer Commemorative Clinic. This is a clinic that deals with women experiencing domestic violence. The clinic, really acting as a front for the likes of Wendy Kukier and the Coalition for Gun Control, claimed in court that Bill C-19, the act that abolished the Lawn Gun Registry, that it was unconstitutional because it violated Section 7 and Section 15 of the Charter. Well, Section 7 deals with security of the person. Section 15 deals with equality rights. According to this clinic, the abolition of the gun registry, the long gun registry, would hurt women. And therefore, Parliament should be barred from abolishing it by the courts. Now, setting aside for a moment that it's up to Parliament and not the courts to set what is and is not in the criminal code, the arguments made were ridiculous and not even supported by the facts, not even the facts presented by the anti-gun applicants. Kukier and company claimed that Bill C-19 was discriminatory in nature and needed to be struck down. The judge disagreed, saying there was nothing in the record to show that the intent of Parliament was to disadvantage women, even pointing out that the act to do away with the long gun registry was first put forward by conservative MP Candace Hepner, now known as Candace Bergen. Ms. Bergen has been on the show. I've interviewed her. I've scrummed her in the foyer of the House of Commons, and I can assure you that she is a woman. I can also assure you that it was not her intent or the government's intent to discriminate against women, many of whom legally own lawn guns. The anti-gun crowd also tried to use statistics, but as Justice E.M. Morgan pointed out, those stats don't back up the claims that registering guns will necessarily protect women from domestic violence involving firearms anyway. From paragraph 102 of the decision, Justice Morgan wrote, turning to the context of violence by intimate partners, the statistics likewise do not unequivocally support the claim that women especially benefited from the long gun registry. There is conjecture, but no reliable evidence that women will be especially disadvantaged by the registry's elimination. Although like all the other statistical data, it is not a conclusive point one RCMP, RCMP witness did note that in Toronto in 2013, with no long gun registry in operation, 100% of all the firearms murder victims were male. Interesting. Men, more likely to be victims of firearm violence. In fact, it's been that way all along, and yet the argument has been that gun control was about protecting women. Now, anyone that looked at the stats and bothered to ask questions could have seen this. But in the public debate around gun control, few, including most in the media, we're willing to question and push people like Wendy Cook here. Now, a court of law doesn't act like that. Judges won't just take your evidence without asking questions the way most of the media lapdogs will. So unlike when the media simply repeat claims made by the anti-gun folks, well, the court questioned those claims and it found them wanting. How many times have you heard sensible people point out that the problem with guns is really a criminal one because criminals don't register their guns? Well, it turns out in trying to prove the need for the long gun registry in court, Kukier actually proved that point in court. From paragraph 104 of the decision, Professor Kukier also produced evidence that shows firearms used to kill women are not necessarily legally owned and therefore are not necessarily of the type covered by the canceled registry. This fact is borne out by Statistics Canada's study, Firearms and Violent Crime, which reports that 7 out of 10 guns used in homicides are unregistered. Note that. Seven out of 10 guns used in homicides, unregistered. Was that widely reported in the debate on the gun registry? No, it wasn't. It gets in the way of the narrative, the progressive narrative pushed by the media opposition complex that always wants more government control, especially control of guns. What this court decision shows is that the central arguments of the gun control advocates just don't hold up. Then again, they never have. Back in 1998, a friend sent this to me this week, back in 1998, then Reform MP and current Conservative MP Gary Breitkreitz released this letter from RCMP Commissioner J.P.R. Murray. He was asking the Liberal Justice Minister, Alan Rock, actually 
that changed uh, just a few weeks earlier to Anne McClellan to correct the record on gun crime stats being used to support the long gun registry. Kukier had written to Murray at the time asking him for an affidavit to be used in court verifying that the stats Rock had used, built upon RCMP data, that those stats were fully factual. Murray, Murray looked at what Rock had developed and looked at the RCMP data and was shocked. Murray wrote to the Justice Minister to say, your department has its facts all wrong. From the letter, we determined that our statistics showed that there were 73 firearms involved in a violent crime. Compared to the Department of Justice findings of 623 firearms involved in a violent crime. Murray told Kukier that he would not swear the affidavit because the information was not accurate. Rock and McClellan after him, well, they never changed their stats. They never changed their arguments. And the Justice Department continued to use bogus data to justify the long gun registry. Apparently, the gun control advocates haven't changed in the past 20 years, but now they're having their work checked by the courts and the lies are coming out. And now we are here to report on it. And that's the byline. <laughs>